Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? Hey, Dean, how you doing? Not too bad. Yourself? Um, um, well, I'm in a situation, but, uh, first <laughs> off, yeah, obviously I'm in a situation. Uh, thank you, and I'm a truck driver, and I have it, I have it on the Dean Clipper channel all day long while I'm driving. Um, <laughs> but as you know, the government tries to regulate when I'm tired and when I'm not tired. Yep. And, uh, so I got a log violation ticket. Okay. Now, now here's the problem. 21 days uh, for pleading in Virginia, I've missed the pleading time, and I missed putting in my affidavit, which is your affidavit, by the way, uh, that you have on the site there. Oh, oh, oh I, got, I got an affidavit up there? Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, your sample affidavit, you know, I'm not a government. There's several of them. Yeah, yeah. the, format, the uh, forum. Yeah. Yeah, on the forum. So anyways, so I'm past the 21 days. The ticket, you know, the ticket, I'm up to the point where now i got to sign the ticket, turn it in, and so... And I wish I, I was smart enough to put two and two together really quick, but I'm just going to ask you really quick. How do I sign a ticket now that I'm guilty and put it in? I can't lose my license. It's well, my you're, you're, you're never guilty. Yeah, you don't want to lose your license. Uh, I've, I'm not sure what the violation, how much, how much of a penalty it carries with it, but uh, is it is it like, like a, any other kind of a traffic ticket where you get uh, you probably have a pink copy? Well, it's, it's just a summons, and the problem is, is they have these scores now, these uh these CSA scores and and every ticket I get it goes against my score which means that it's harder for me to get another job with another company yeah. if I have a if I have a high score see that's the whole to... problem with with that is when people actually do depend on their trucking career um you really almost can't start messing with the system because they really got that locked down tight eh like that is commercial trucking that's um, most companies you work for are terrified of like the Department of Transportation and all those kind of organizations that they're not going to look lightly on you kind of like pulling a lot of this free man stuff. Uh, the only thing I would say you could try to do is, uh, is to try to get the, like the original ink signature charge. The same thing that I've been saying with, with, with everything here. Um, if they're going to refuse to produce the original charge, whether it's got an ink signature of what, like a cop on it or something or whoever issued you this ticket, I don't know who, is, who issued the ticket to you. Um, the, the state of Virginia, it's, a, it's just a normal summons. Okay. It's, oh, so it's not, yeah, so it's a, it's a summons for, for, like, criminal court kind of thing, for a driver's license. Yeah, for the 26th of this month. Okay, well, then, yeah, no, no, you go you go down to the court wherever you're supposed I to can. go. Deal. I can't. I'm a truck driver. <laughs> oh, shit, that's right. Okay. Um, I'm a thousand, I'm a thousand, at any one time. I'm a thousand miles away from Virginia. Okay, I mean, it, not it, a problem. Then what you would do is, uh, maybe, you, yeah, you probably don't have the time to contact them by mail either. Uh, I would just write, if you could, if you got access to a computer, write a little cover letter that said that uh, when this when this ticket was issued, they failed to give you the the the, uh, the the administrator copy, the copy that's supposed to be for the administrator with the ink signature on it for me to settle. And then what I would do is I'd take a red sharpie, and I love doing this. And so you take the copy that you have, which is probably obviously it's got the uh, the facsimile signature on it, right? Because it was like a carbon copy. Oh man. Shoot! Of course, I'm so prepared. It's a yellow ticket copy. Yeah, um, the, 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 my, the, the signature is obviously carbon copy because it's a part of a carbon copy the document, right? Yeah, yeah, because I can barely even read uh, the copy. All, 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 all I do for that is I take a red sharpie, like a red marker, and I write okay. it at the very top of the document, new original. So you're the administrator, and you're making this the new original copy because that's the only one they provided you with. Okay. Right, so this is now the new original document, and then now you can do one of two things: you can accept it for value and sign it, and sign above their the, wherever their signature is. Make sure you AFB it and sign above their signature, and then send that back to the courthouse, and just mail it to them. Regular mail, if you want to stamp it, uh, keep a copy though. And what I like to do is I like to go if I'm going to send it regular mail, because why pay eight bucks for registered mail if you don't have to? Uh, just get the post office to stamp both the photocopy you're going to keep and the new original that you're sending back, and then mail that to the courthouse. So sign it above where my signer, my signature already is, or sign it where the, the officer is? Oh, that's right, in the States. You get, oh, no, your, your signature is already on that document? Uh, yeah, I promise to appear at the time and place going above, signing the summons, and on an admission of guilt. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, so... Yeah, they make you sign them here. Yeah, they make you sign them down there. I forgot about that. Uh, okay, well, then... 
Uh, aside from that, yeesh, uh, you can still try the AFB process like that. You don't don't even worry about the fact you, that you sign b uh, below them. That's that whole underwriter and overwriter argument. I really don't care about that anyways. Just okay, like what about like you, you always like say, you know, well, can I be bound to contract without full disclosure or something to that effect? Yeah, well, number one, you were, you're obviously forced to sign that document. Were they going to arrest you if you didn't sign it? Correct. Okay, then one of the things you could also try is just uh, I take the, the same red sharpie instead, and just write diagonally across the document, um, no contract, dishonored, and then I would underline my signature with a little caption beside it. And I had my brother do this actually. God, I use him for a lot of examples. He's like a guinea pig for a lot of this. Uh, and then right beside the signature that has an arrow pointing now to the red line under the signature. I just write in red sharpie right across the document. I was physically threatened to sign this. No contract, no consent. And send that back to the courthouse. Now you've let them know you didn't sign that voluntarily, so it's not a contract. Okay, I didn't ask the cop what would happen. So can I just sign it that I signed under protest and duress, maybe? Um. Well, was he armed? Yeah, he was armed. Was he act acting in a threatening manner? Well, not really. He was nice. <laughs> I guess, yeah. But uh, I guess you, you guys know down there you're going to be arrested if you don't sign these things, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can always put on there, I believed I would have been arrested if I didn't sign this. You could put that. Because you want to okay, be honest. If you believed, honestly, that this guy was going to arrest you without warrant, if you didn't sign that document, then that's what you put on there. People have to remember that none of this stuff is ever showing up in the court, right? When you get arrested, thrown in jail, beaten, dragged before a judge... How many people say on and for the record, I was arrested without a warrant, beaten and dragged before you, and I'm in handcuffs right now? People never say it on the record, so it never happened, right? So you've yeah. got to start getting this, and, and, and it's, it's pretty easy to see now because you've written it right on the document. Well, number one, I, I, I'm the, no contract. I'm dishonoring this. Why am I dishonoring it? Well, somebody presented this with me at the side of the highway who was wearing a gun, and I felt pretty threatened at the time. Okay. And then uh, part two, I, also, I have a question, too, about the... Uh... Okay, like so. Part two, it says, you know, a waiver of a trial, plea of a guilty. So if I signed it there, dated it, and if they were to send me, I mean, I, I really don't want that. But you mentioned that um, you, let, let's say I did sign it guilty, and they sent me a bill. So would I just, you know, like which I, which is not what I want to do. I want to do what you just told me to do. But the the theory behind, I send, I sent them, like, like hypothetically, I sent this in, signed it, and they sent me a bill. And then I would send I would send them a letter asking for the check to go with the bill too. Um, well, no. If they send you a bill, a proper bill has to have a signature on it. If it's going to come from the court, it will. It'll probably have a magistrate's uh, signature on it or whatever they call it down the states. You now you got a, a document that's already got a signature on it. You sign above them, you accept it. The bill's paid. Done. So try that. Absolutely. Why not? There, there's a million Definitely. and one solutions to this and remedy if you want to try it and just experiment. But absolutely, that should by theory work. Yeah, but, but my, my fear is that I'm a truck driver. That's, you know, and I have a commercial license out of necessity. Yeah. So I, I consider that a protest and duress. Yeah, well, I, the only thing I'd say to that is, uh, is unfortunately, and people hate to hear this, uh, if your career depends on it, then play by the rules. Yeah, you know. All right. I appreciate so, the Thank you so much, Dean. Yeah, either that or try a couple of those things just to see what happens, man. So, so uh, I should make a copy of this, but but the, put the yellow, put the, put the, you know, no contract, dishonored, and then... What if they come back with, you know, well, go screw yourself, you're a truck driver, you're a commercial driver, blah, 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 you should know better, blah, blah, blah. Then deal with, deal with whatever they send you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. it's all trial and, error, trial and error, man. Okay, I, pre I appreciate your time, and uh, I am a member of Free Manitoba, and uh, I, like I said, I listen to you all day long. And awesome, then send me, send, me, send, me a call, or send me a message and let me know what happens with all that. Okay, I appreciate it. Perfect. All right, thank you, Dean. All right, thank you. We're going to move on to Will Sam. That's a cute name. Will Sam? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can now. Go right ahead. Uh, Did you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I got involved in, in all this stuff, and I never would have otherwise, uh, getting into a, a colossally horrible uh, family law situation. Okay. And of course, like like all almost all these the the, the really I don't know, uh, oppressive family law situations, one of the strategies to isolate you from everybody else is to take a situation that 
fundamentally to begin with is really simple and make it really complicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and really simple to begin with is that um, I was in a, a marriage with a couple young children, and the the um, uh, the, the other the, my, my spouse really didn't want to uh, contribute all that much to a marriage and and kids and, and certainly nothing financially, uh, but. Uh, she wanted lots of money, and, and uh, um, on, on a bad day, that looked way better than the marriage, which is pretty much the same for everybody else. Well, she was she would she went to some government officials at different times because people told her, "Oh, well, if you if you take control of the situation, you'll get a whole lot of money and you'll be rich for life." And, and uh, that was very very appealing to her. Yep, <laughs> usually is, um, and. But none of the none of the government officials that that uh, she went to would help her because she clearly wasn't uh, uh, taking responsibility. She was uh, uh, starting to act very mentally strange, and um, even even though she is a woman and and uh, uh, a very presentable looking woman, uh, she was. Uh, uh, she would be a total embarrassment for any government official to help her. So she was, so she was denied help uh, to to get money, and and I mean, she, it, it was like I was uh, a single parent uh, with a professional career of two uh, two small children and an adult wild child. Okay. And uh, but. I, I was doing some work temporarily in, in the, the banana-shaped republic on the western uh, side of the United States, um, and they have a law there that this was written by this DA's office in this county that we never set foot in together. That basically said, if they can get in, if they can get a, a signature on a piece of paper assigning rights to the kids over to a county and that parent can keep the kids, but uh, then they belong to that county, even though, you, I mean, normally in, in the United States, you're supposed to be someplace six months for the, um, for the whatever jurisdiction to have some claim to, to uh, children or family or whatever. But they got this law passed there that basically said, uh, well, to, to boil it down real simply, what it said was... I would appreciate I that. Paper, when I filed paperwork, still thinking the system worked, where we actually lived and could have witnesses and have some semblance of a fair hearing, uh, which was, of course, a different location where we were act, we'd actually right, done what's meetings. What's your question, young man? <laughs> well, the... the um, uh, Anyhow, th th there is a situation. It's not a unique situation where, where some county could take complete, some jurisdiction could take complete control, uh, uh, basically pretty much no matter what. And, and if you go against them, then like just to to try and get a fair hearing of what's going on with your own children, your own okay, so family. The, the, the state took You're custody of your kids. Yeah, they're basically they're they're saying that uh, well, it's like okay, you're okay. Number well, one, I, I don't even need to hear anything more. If the state took custody of your kids, you're gonna want to look up something called the United Nations uh, Declaration on the on the Rights of the Child. Yes. You look up that declaration. You swear out an affidavit that the state kidnapped your kids, and you serve that on the state. And you, and you send them excerpts from the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Child, and you yeah. let the state know they have no authority to take your children, there's no contract in place between us for them to have taken your children to have jurisdiction in the first place, ask them to produce the contract. If they don't, they've agreed with you they don't have a contract, which means no jurisdiction. That's what jurisdiction means to these people. It means a contract. They have no contract, period. It's presumed. You want to sue them in civil court, after you've established all these, all these facts, along with filing affidavits and quoting parts of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Child, which says that, you, you, that the state cannot take your children away. 
they cannot. Just read through the Act, the, the United Nations Declaration on that. It says right yeah. in there. So you just got to quote that Act, send them a copy of it. I'm pretty sure the United Nations, uh, or sorry, the United States is a, is a signatory to that. And if yeah. they're not, and, and, just... and I and I have that the 